live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back to the Sands. Day two, AWS reInvent 2019. A lot of buzz still going on here, Dave Vellante. Yeah, it's Isn't all it buzz, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the jam-packed show for a second day in a row. Day two of our coverage here on theCUBE. Along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls, and we're joined by Charles, uh, Paul Cheesebro, rather, who is the CTO and President of Digital at the Fox Corporation. Paul, good to see you, sir. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me, John. Thanks Dave. for being with us, we yeah, appreciate I'm that. I'm a big fan of theCUBE. So, so what brings you here, right, about your partnership with AWS, and uh, let's, let's just start with that, characterize a little bit about what that relationship's all about. Yeah, well I think reInvent's become the go-to show for cloud computing generally, you know. I think it's its eighth season and uh, certainly for my team and myself, it's the place to discover the kind of latest product evolutions and talk to other people in my position and peers in the industry and see what's going on. So it's a great uh, opportunity to do a bit of fact digging and uh, see, see what's going on in the industry. Right, so, yeah, right. so, uh, so what fact digging are you doing right now that applies to your world? What have you seen here, maybe in the past day or two, that you said, yep, I, I can see where that's playing into the entertainment world? Yeah, well I'd say the first thing is the ecosystem. You can see from around, around here the buzz and the vibe. I mean, this is at a different level to what I've seen it before. Uh, and that's always really good to see. So, um, you know, it's not just an AWS story, it's kind of the companies that they're enabling and a lot of the innovation comes out of these smaller startups that are building on top of the platform, so spending a ton of time on that front. Um, I'd also say, you know, Andy Jassy's keynote yesterday, really very impressive on how they've kept the foot down on new releases on the kind of data front. Um, so SageMaker and Redshift are two technologies we use heavily and they've continued to kind of innovate on that front. And, and just getting time with you know, the top table of AWS and you know, the deep technical uh, engineers who can kind of give you a view of, of where the company's going and what, where their services will be in a year or two's time is, you know, it's, uh, you don't get that any, any other kind of place. You know, when we first started doing theCUBE at, at reInvent seven years ago, a lot of tire kickers, certainly from the enterprise, a lot of, a lot of developers, no question, but you're way beyond kicking tires. So what are some of the things that you're doing in, in the cloud? You mentioned Redshift and SageMaker. What are, you, what are you doing with those tools? Yeah, so, I mean, you're a media company, so you'll understand how technology's kind of carved up. And you know, on the enterprise side, which is all of our internal IT and networks, we've pretty much migrated all of that over recent years into, into the cloud and largely running on AWS. So storage, compute, we've retired all of our data centers bar one. Um, all of our applications that our employees use are software as a service based, so we don't really run our own infrastructure. Uh, and on top of that, we've really kind of put a very deep data infrastructure in place where you know, the consumer trend, um, uh, the way our content's consumed these days, we've got a very direct relationship with the consumer. We stream more and more content to them, and that throws off a data trail that you've got to capture and, and manage, and we use uh, Redshift and SageMaker to anal analyze the data on top of Redshift uh, on that front. So the enterprise piece, we've done pretty holistically. On the digital side of our business, our products and services and our apps, they're almost entirely built natively on AWS services. Um, our engineers, are the, the kind of the innovation that they're driving there, they couldn't do it without partners like AWS. And then the third and final piece to a media company is the uh, kind of the media and the broadcast piece, how you move video around the kind of production organization, the creative organization, and that's the bit that we're announcing here today, that partnership with AWS to kind of solve that issue. Yeah, so I, I wanted to ask you about, a big part of your transformation was data. Yeah. Um, and, and so you got kind of rid, of rid of, they always talk about the heavy lifting, you got rid of that for the most part, all, all except one data center. What did you do with the people that were doing all that stuff? Did they just sort of go to retraining or attrition, did you get, ex they get excited about learning new tooling. How did that all go? Yeah, well I've been on the journey around cloud computing since 2006 in, in my career, so. Yeah, right. um, day, day one, I guess it's still day uh, one. In fact, I purchased <laughs> S3 from Werner Vogels back then. and uh, That was the first product, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Service, and, um, yeah. and then I met Andy soon after. Um, and uh, in those days, and I think some organizations experienced this, the technology team were the most risk averse and 
you know, they put every blocker in the, in the way from moving to the cloud because they saw it as a threat and frankly didn't understand it. So it took a lot of pushing to get things going in those days. I think it's slightly different now. Um, but once you're through that, uh, that barrier, then you know, and people get momentum and you know, anyone in my position as a CTO will tell you there's no shortage of work to throw people at. So um, you know, the resource that we've got within the team, I'd much rather they were building software than you know, managing servers and pipes and doing upgrades. So we've released a ton of talent to do what I would call the value add piece that the consumers touch and feel. Uh, and moved it really kind of front of, front of store. Uh, and uh, that's made a big difference. Some people didn't make, make the journey and we brought new talent in. I think that's inevitable. Yep. But, uh, so, yeah. so it's almost like you get to practice a little less and play a little more. Yeah, oh, totally. It's about what it comes down to. Right? And, totally, and, yeah. and yeah. sort of re-architected re your business around data and software, it sounds yeah. like, as well, opposed to, like I said, pipes. Yeah, but everything starts with the consumer in our business. So if you work backwards from that, you know, they've changed their behaviors and they expect um, content in different forms on different devices. They expect the traditional channel channels of cable, they expect the new channels of mobile and, and streaming. And that places a lot of stress internally on how you create and produce and distribute that content. So to some degree in our industry, we had no choice, we had to change um, and that's been you know, as a technologist driving transformation, it's been a, so, a I mean, fun ride. You're, you're almost on this parallel track a little bit. You talk about the transformation you're going through with live streaming right now. That's a must, must do, must have. Yeah. That's how consumers uh, bring in their media. And yet you have to transform tech, technologically speaking to provide this consumer transformation as well. So you have these two tracks going down that, that you've got to answer to. I mean, what yeah. kind of complexity is that created for you because your business is fundamentally changing yeah. and the technology is fundamentally changing. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I think historically the solution to that problem was to put parallel infrastructure in place and your digital team would have their own infrastructure, your enterprise team would have their own infrastructure, and then your media and broadcast team would be on a completely different network doing their own thing and they would all coexist. And I think the kind of convergence at the consumer end has kind of rippled back into a convergence within the organization as well, where you know, our technology teams play across those three different fields. And someone like AWS and other partners like that are now capable of being partners across those three different fields together. So you know, the convergence at the consumer end really does apply within the organization as well. So you mentioned some things you're doing with AWS. Uh, maybe you could talk about that initiative and talk about the tech and we can talk about the outcome for the consumer. Yeah. So I think the, um, the last bastions within any media organization in terms of you know, transforming, you think about the media and broadcast operation, the, you know, everything from the trucks and the cameras through to the edit suites, through to master control, through to the way that you play out and distribute. You know, not only do we have a national network, but we've got local um, stations as well. And you overlay the digital products on top of that. It's a very complicated set of partners and direct access points at the end. And the technology that's been operating in that space hasn't changed since the 90s, genuinely hasn't. It maybe got a minor upgrade when HD came along in 2001, but it really hasn't changed. So um, what we have decided to do is kind of really re-engineer that. Um, it's the only piece of our business that doesn't run natively on the cloud. Uh, and we're you know, pleased to announce this week the deal with AWS as the strategic partner to really kind of lift our video workflows in terms of how we produce, create, and really importantly distribute our, our video to all of those partners um, in a way that kind of really transforms the way our creatives can work as well. So uh, we're, you know, it was a pretty long process going through how you do that safely, because if you get it wrong, you go off the air and right. that's really... Can't do that, you can't cannot go dark. do that. You know, you're TV <laughs> right. guys, you, you know that. Right, and, right. Um, so we've been very careful. Yeah. But I say, you know, AWS have stepped up with some great technologies, but really importantly, a kind of great vision as well for it. So, so what specifically have, have you done? You created sort of your, a, a new platform in the cloud? Uh, yeah. It, so we were, we were very, very fortunate. We, you know, we've just completed this deal with Disney to sell some of our assets there. Um, it meant that actually we had a greenfield approach to this part of our business. So for the first time ever, we were unencumbered with a legacy 
so a blank sheet of paper, and we came at it with the attitude of, if you were a large broadcaster starting your business today, how would you do it? And with that mindset, you, it takes you into a very different, different space. So we're working with AWS and their media services team and the elemental team within that to, uh, to encode our video um, within our um, sports news, entertainment, and local stations. We're using them to move the video from studio locations uh, and you know, football stadiums and news gathering locations, you know, remote locations, straight into the cloud to be both managed uh, and produced. And then we're, it stays natively within the cloud to be published out to distribution partners, whether it's Comcast for cable, whether it's um, Hulu for live TV, whether it's Apple for the VOD stuff that they do, or whether it's our own services. Um, but that natively stays in the cloud, that workflow, and that just really enables a very different way of thinking. And, and the move is obviously a big challenge, right? Yes. I mean, it's video and it's, it's big data. How, how are you solving that problem? What are, the, what are the components of that that enable you to do that? So I think it would have been very difficult to achieve this vision um, if some of the products like Outpost and the local zones that AWS have announced at the show, you know, we had early visibility and testing of those. You know, if you're in an edit suite, editing 4K content, you can't necessarily, in a truck, you can't necessarily go back and forth to the cloud all the time. So we have the ability to kind of put a piece of the cloud on-prem or into, into a truck or into a, into a studio to reduce the, eliminate the latency and to manage that. So that's one thing. We also have architected it in a way where resilience is core and key. So if for whatever reason one part of the architecture goes down, then other bits of it can, can pick up the slack. And um, again, the, the way that we've worked with AWS on that front, they've really helped us kind of architect something robust there. Yeah, how much does live come into this? I mean, you, had, I mean, yeah. you can't afford a slip up, right? I mean, it, it's one thing to have downtime, and you pointed it, you can't go black, but just in terms of, of what you deliver, whether it's live news, live sports, live entertainment, yeah, yeah. it's real time. So we're predominantly a live company now, um, you know, and um, it's the, the heart of our business, it's what we're great at doing, it's what our creative teams are, have done all of their lives. And if you take a, an NFL game on a Sunday, you know, the number of cameras, feeds, data, stats, uh, the number of teams you've got both on location and back in the production facility, uh, the number of games you're actually producing at the same time on a complicated day, it can be multiple games. Um, uh, and then the complexity around who you get the signal out to in effect. Live is difficult and I think that's why you haven't seen too many broadcasters go in this direction um, quite yet. So we know we're, we're a kind of early adopter. Um, we're being very careful and cautious around how we're kind of ramping this up. Um, for example, we're still alongside the, the fiber connectivity into the cloud, we're also using satellite. Mm -hmm. um, so some of those decisions we've put in place as near term. You got some redundancies in place just as a exactly. risk management. Yeah. Exactly, so, so we can slowly dial it up and you know, we're building new facilities around this to help, help make it happen as well. But you know, the number one thing is giving the consumer a great experience. I'll give you some examples actually of how this will transform the consumer experience. Great. So great. we'll be able to do both 4K and 8K natively through this infrastructure with AWS. We can't do that today. Latency will be reduced heavily, so we effectively encode the video once, and the device at the end decodes it, so that really kind of compresses that level of latency that you'll see in a football game. And when you think about things like 5G, I don't know whether you saw Hans and the Verizon team and of their course, announcement yeah. yesterday, you know, 5G. Huge. Things like betting services and other things that we're getting into, you have to have close to zero latency to make those things work. So. Right. In the current broadcast chain, we encode and decode and re-encode and you know, all of these compression chains and, and at the end of the, you've got a fairly decent quality signal but by no means 4K or 8K and that's one aspect. So the consumer will see a difference. The other thing is we never want to be in a position again where we use infrastructure from 30 years ago. I mean, we, no company in 2019 can afford to be in that position. So by plugging into AWS, we kind of get that constant drip feed of innovation as it comes, as a, and a very software-focused sort of um, architecture as opposed to hardware and cables, which is, you see a lot of in broadcast. Um, 
So, you know, we're pivoting not just the business, but the way we do business as well. So the consumer experience is much improved. Yeah. As well, you mentioned live, of course the mainspring is live. That's where the content is created, but there's also an on-demand experience as well. Is that, I presume, Full compressed? Part. So I can get to the, the best highlights if I miss the game. You know, I get that little mini, mini game yeah. that I can watch and get a good flavor for it. That, yeah. that is compressed as well. Absolutely, so I mean, going back to your data question earlier, so this infrastructure natively as we're putting video through it, um, you know, Amazon and AWS have the technologies to index the video in real time, to do scene detection, face recognition, a lot of those um, kind of very forward-leaning technologies that I think for the last 10 years have been kind of more science than, um, than fact, um, but now they're kind of really coming to their own. So all of the video that goes through the pipes in a live form gets really in real time indexed. Um, all of the consumption information about how the video is being consumed on the device comes back in in real time. Uh, and we can combine that into an experience. So if you're joining the live feed or coming at the, the video on demand asset later, you've got a much, much richer experience, whether that's searching and finding the bit that you want or whether that's you know, us curating a package of content uh, automatically uh, using that metadata. So uh, we're excited about that. Talk what, more about the search. What, what, how does that all work? Well, I think search on a TV experience is still pretty clumsy. Um, you know, Amen. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, it's definitely, and part of that's the user interface. I mean, hats off to Comcast, their Xfinity product. A lot of the search now is done by voice through the remote and they're seeing a transformational difference there. But um, even in some of the OTT streaming services, the dis search and discovery, I'd use discovery in the same context, is still clumsy and, and that's entirely driven by the data. There's a reason Google are the best in the marketplace at search because of the, you know, the kind of level of indexing that they do to create the, and I think you know, AWS and their approach to video will be game changing for us on this front. And they've obviously got the search technologies on the front end to enable that as well as the kind of indexing technologies on the, on the back end. How, how do you keep up with all the innovation you mentioned up top that, you know, exciting that you see Andy Jassy announce all this stuff. How do you keep up with it all? Is it does it sometimes feel like it's going too fast to be able to absorb it all? No, not, this is a great time to be a CTO. You love it. There's, there's yeah, no way, and, you know, we could complain <laughs> about it, but this consumer's not going to stop you know, <laughs> you know, changing the way that they demand uh, content from us. So for me, it's a combination of picking the right partners, speaking to them frequently, and coming to events like this to, to meet my peers. I also spend a lot of time with venture capital companies and um, very early stage startups to really get an idea around what's coming next over the next three to five years and, um, and getting in early with those customers. I kind of have a mantra with my team internally where you know, I don't reward them necessarily for just doing business with the old incumbent legacy technology providers. I'd much rather we experiment with the, the next generation of companies. That's actually how we began our very early relationship with AWS and, yeah. and Amazon, and um, it served us well. Paid off. Well, yeah. the next time you see Joe or Troy, please give him our best. I will. All right, sure. if you Thanks, will. John. They're yeah. always welcome on theCUBE, as are you, Paul. Thank you. Paul it's a pleasure. Fox, joining us here on theCUBE. We'll be back with more coverage here live, AWS reInvent 2019. You're watching theCUBE from the Sands. <laughs>